Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. The Secrets of the North is finally out. This new quest grants access to a new repeatable boss you can farm for tons of DP called the Phantom Muspa. So today, I will give you the most accurate information for you to be able to make bank with this boss. Most importantly, I will show you how much money I made from farming all the ancient essence needed in order to upgrade my imbued heart. So, stay tuned for that towards the end of the video. If you enjoy it, consider subscribing with notifications on, and joining our Discord server for video and stream notifications and also general guidance. Since the Phantom Muspa is the quote-unquote final boss of the newest adventure, as long as you finish Secrets of the North, you're good to go. The quest itself has a ton of other quest requirements and only a few levels, but afterwards you're free to face this boss as many times as you want. As for levels, the minimum gear I will be showing you needs at least levels 64 ranged, 78 magic, and 42 attack strength and defense for void armor. 52 prayer is pretty much mandatory, and 69 agility, which is the quest requirement, will be good to start. To deal more damage even if you don't have best in slot gear, I suggest at least level 80 ranged, 82 magic for ice splits, as well as high defense level for higher tier armor. 77 prayer is also recommended for rigor and augury, and bump agility up to around 75 or 80 if you can. I will show you 4 setups for both gear and inventory. 2 for both ranged and magic, and 2 for ranged only. The first one for each category will be the bare minimum which will include void, and the second one will be the best in slot so you can adjust to what you have. First we have a hybrid void setup. Let's start with magic, so wear the Void Hood, an Immute God Cape, Amulet of Fury, Ruby Dragon Bolt Enchanted, a Trident of the Swamp, Unholy Book, Snakeskin Boots, and whatever budget ring you have. In your inventory, you are going to take Void Range Helmet, a Dragon Crossbow, Diamond Dragon Bolt Enchanted, Sapphire Bolt Enchanted, and then take a Ranging Potion, Magic Potion, Stamina Potion, and at least 3 Prayer Potions, and fill the rest with food. Also, don't forget about an Emergency Teleport. Up next, I will show you what I personally run, and like I said, you can adjust to what you have. My gear consists of Full Ancestral, an Imbued God Cape, Occult Necklace, Dragon Arrows, a Tumic and Shadow, Tormented Bracelet, Eternal Boots, and finally a Brimstone Ring. In my inventory, I have an 8-way range switch, and I also take the Dragon Hunter Crossbow, Twisted Buckler, and Sapphire Dragon Bolts Enchanted. Some supplies, and finally a rune pouch with Ice Barrage runes. Alright, let's assume you don't want to freeze and you're gonna run around like a headless chicken. So the minimum range to only gear and inventory will look like this. It's almost the same as before minus the mage switches. Since you have more space, you might want to throw in an extra stamina pot just in case, and more food or prayer potions. The best in slot ranged only gear is looking a lot less crowded since you're not bringing a full mage switch. That's 8 more spaces for food and potions, so mix and match according to what you need during the fight. If you don't have a Twisted Bow, a Bofa with full crystal armor is your next best option. Alright, you're geared up and ready to go. How do we get to the place where you fight the Phantom Muspa? The best way to do so is with a Vice Teleport in your POH or with an Icy Basalt. Since you finished the quest, I'll assume you know how to get there, if not, here it is sped up. Okay, now let's quickly talk about important mechanics so we can put them together for a live example. When you go in, the Phantom Muspa is going to be either brown or green. If it's brown, it will chase you around to attack with melee, and if it's green, it will stay away from you attacking with range from a distance. Both attacks can hit through prayer, but the melee one is especially deadly, so run or freeze as soon as you can. If the Muspa is attacking with ranged, it has a chance of launching a purple orb with a distinct sound. You have about 2 ticks to react, so you gotta be quick. This will hit with magic, and if you don't pray against it, it has a good chance of knocking you out. Max hit, I have personally seen, is a 69. Nice. If the attack lands and you're still alive, you will be corrupted and your prayer will start draining. If you are in the Arceus spellbook, cast the spell Ward of Arceus to cleanse it. So if it's brown, attack with magic, and if it's green, attack with ranged. Or just range if you're camping this style. Keep damaging it and after about 15% damage taken, it will change form and you will have to adapt to whatever it changed to. It will also summon a spike below you, so move as soon as it changes forms. Throughout the fight, the Muspa will do two special attacks as you keep damaging it, and they will be at random order. The first one is known as the Akka Face. If you've done Tombs of a Mascot, you know why. If not, a bunch of purple orbs will spawn heading in random directions, and if they hit you, you will take considerable damage. I will leave this tile highlight in the description because for now, this is a safe spot and you will never get hit by them if you stand here. During this phase, the Muspa will teleport around the room and you can quickly click on it to keep attacking. Do it either on the safe tile or around the middle of the room, 
because if it's too far away to attack, it's going to drag you towards it, which means that you can get hit by the orbs. When it's done, it will always spawn in the same corner of the room for you to keep attacking. The second special attack is a lot simpler. It will stop for a few ticks, and spikes will come out of the ground aiming for you. They are pretty slow, so just run around as you attack it to avoid loss of DPS. If they reach you, you will take heavy damage. Now, here comes the fun part. After it reaches about 150 HP, it will teleport you to the middle of the room and let out a massive shockwave. Notice how there are tons of spikes on the ground prior to this? Well, you're gonna need to hide behind them to avoid damage since it will most likely kill you if you are low on HP. If you dodged it or if you survived, get ready for the final portion of the fight. The Muspa will change to a completely different color and instead of HP, it will now have a shield which is represented by a purple bar on top of it which are technically prayer points. You can do one of two things here. One, equip your crossbow with sapphire dragon bolts and hope for the effect to activate which will drain enemy prayer. If you have a Zerite crossbow, this is where you would want to do the special attack for a guaranteed proc, well, almost, which will be more powerful. The second thing you can do is activate Smite whenever you are attacking. It will have crazy high defense, so you're not gonna do a ton of damage, but you're still gonna chip away at the shield. If you're on the Archaeus spellbook, you can activate a spell called Greater Corruption, which will also drain a bit of prayer with every attack. It stacks with Smite, so it's going to make it go quicker. When the purple bar drops to zero, the real HP bar will show once more and this time it will stay on the range form and do the occasional mage damage. Switch your prayers accordingly, and that is how you defeat the Phantom Muspa. So now that you know every little detail about the fight, let's put it together by showing you a live demonstration with minimum gear. So here we go with a full void kill with both ranged and magic. So, enjoy! Okay, scapers, it is time to look at a live demonstration for a kill. The gear and inventory is looking as follows. The quick things to note, this should be a normal Fury, not a Blood Fury, I just have it here because I don't have a regular one. And number two, you might want to grab normal Sapphire Bolts instead of Dragon because you realistically only need damage with the Ruby and the Diamond ones. This one is literally just for the proc. So I'm gonna start by drinking my Ranging Potion, my Magic Potion, and of course my Stamina Potion to run around a little bit better. And I'm gonna commentate over the most important parts of the kill. I may not commentate the entire thing because there are some parts that can definitely go rather slow. Now, it's gonna be green, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with ranged. And as you can see, that is right away the magic attack. You have like two ticks to react, so you really, really wanna be careful. It's pretty fast, so boom, there we go. And that should be it. Um, well, other than the green phase, there's really nothing to look out for except for the mage switch. And of course, whenever we do enough damage, it's gonna, t it's gonna turn brown. And of course, we'll, you know, start running around. And there we go, as you can see, number one, I am going to get out of the way, otherwise it will summon a spike under me. And as you can see, the first freeze is not going to catch, I got lucky with a zero. Second one is not going to catch. Can I get a third one? Doesn't look like that's the case. Um, if you do this in void, the freeze method may be not super reliable, maybe you need some like better accuracy, I guess. But once it's here, you're going to be able to land a couple of hits and uh, yeah, keep doing more damage. Alright, changes to green again, so we are going to grab the, uh, what do you call it, we're going to grab the range setup. And of course, it is going to start doing the Aka phase, or what we like to call it. Now, quick things to note, again, if you have a crossbow, even at long range, it is not going to go the maximum distance. As you can see, it's going to drag you from here all the way to the corner, and you know it's over when it spawns right over here. Of course, at about 50 or 40% HP, you want to swap to your Diamond Bolts, because at this point, if you get the special for the Ruby Bolts, it is not going to be as great of a hit as if it was at the very beginning of the fight. So just run around to take care of um, the safe spots and start looking for where you can hide for the massive Shockwave attack at the end of the fight. Okay, so anywhere between 100 to 150 HP, it is going to let out the shockwave that I told you about, and you have to hide behind these tentacles or spikes, and this is where you want to start wearing your sapphire bolts. 
Now you want to sync your attacks in a way that it's not attacking you as soon as you are. So you can actually use the smite prayer in order to wear off the shield a little better. So check this out. As soon as it attacks, swap. Attack, swap. You can prayer flick or you may like maybe do a lazy flick or you know just just do whatever you're comfortable with i can i can just do this a problem i guess there's a second proc and there we go now from here on out it is smooth sailing as long as you avoid the spikes And after a couple of minutes being about <laughs> 5 minutes and 23, uh, there you go, there's the Phantom Must Be Kill. As you can see, my PB is 1 minute and 53 seconds, and that is with uh, things like a Zerite Crossbow, Dumican Shadow, Twisted Bow, Masori, Ancestral. But for now, if you want to farm some GP, uh, just from one kill, which was not a great one to be honest, we got 105,000 GP. This one is going to sell worth more, and the smoke runes are not that much anymore but that is it for the phantom muspa and i hope this was useful so let's go back to or the scripted part of the video gl now the boss isn't too intricate so there aren't many extra tips i can give you in order to make it faster more enjoyable and so on the first one is for your spellbook remember that if you are an ancients it will be purely to freeze since blood spells seem a little weaker here and you're not going to heal a whole ton when it comes to the archaea spellbook you can take a book of the dead to use thralls since you are already using the Word of Archaeos and the Greater Corruption. Make sure your attacks are not synced up during the Prayer Drain phase. Otherwise, you won't be able to activate Smite and Protect at the same time. If this happened to me, I start attacking right after it attacks me. If there are spikes chasing after you, they can be blocked by other spikes already on the ground. Look for a safe spot in order to avoid running around as much as if there weren't any. Alright, now for the juicy part of the video. How much money can you make here? And the simple answer is... I don't know. That is, as of the time of making this script. You see, because this is a brand new boss, all the items related to it are going to drop significantly, so I don't want to give you a number that's going to be outdated in a few years. On screen you can see some of the drops and the average loot per kill as of the time of making this script, and the GP per hour will depend on the method you use and how fast you can do it. We are looking for some of the unique drops like the pet, a frozen cache, which is like another roll at the loot, an Ancient Icon to turn the Ancient Staff into an Ancient Scepter, Charged Ice, which will give a different appearance to the pets, and most importantly, Venerator Shard, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which you need 5 of in order to make the new Venator Bow. So boys and girls, I will send you off to a live recording where I will sell my loot after amassing 150,000 Ancient Essence to upgrade my Imbued Heart. Let's go! Okay, boys and girls, so after 200 Phantom Muspa kills, which was just about enough to get 150,000 Phantom Essence for the Imbued Heart upgrade, I ended up with most of this relevant loot that you see here. I'm going to price check it, see how much we sell it for. What I get on the price check is 32 mil, but a couple of things to note. Number one, the Venator Shard is going to sell for a lot more. Even though it's not that expensive, it could be anywhere between 3 to like 5 or 7 mil. Uh, Vo is not great, so, you know, understandably so, parts to make it are not going to be super expensive. Um, and everything else is going to drop quite a bit, because, well, this boss is a few days old. So at this point, well, things are going to drop considerably, so we may not get exactly 32 mil, of course, but let's go ahead and sell it and see uh, everything we got from a grinding. The Phantom Muspa for the Imbued or Saturated Heart. And after selling almost all my supplies, I ended up with 28 mil GP. And of course, the 150,000 Ancient Essence to uh, upgrade the Imbued Heart comes out to be at around 19 mil GP. So if you really want to look at it, well, what did I make from 200 KC? 37 mil, which in my opinion is not terrible. It's I definitely enjoyed it, but it's not something I'm going to do actively for money. I'm much rather do work at our Hydra. To end this video off, we're going to upgrade the Imbued Heart, which is exactly what we're doing here. Oh my god, this looks like the Humidify spell. That looks really cool. It's 150 Asian Essence, saturate your heart, turning it into a saturated heart. And boys and girls, when we activate this, it's basically, it's basically gonna look like the same. But most importantly, we're gonna get extra magic levels, and they are not going to wear off. You're gonna be able to wear it to, to we use it every 5 minutes, and basically picture it like a Divine Combat Potion, but just for magic. Gonna give us a couple of extra levels, but that is pretty much it for the grind. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Most importantly, thank you to all the absolute legends who are members of the channel. If you would like to monetarily support it, you can click the join button below, see all the cool benefits and rewards you can get for your monetary pledge. Join this list of legends and join Discord if you want to, I can give you the role. That being said, thank you so much for watching everyone, and I will see you 
in next week's upload, when we will start the 1 to 99 revamped guides, starting with my favorite skill and the best one in the game, runecrafting. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you then. Ba-ba-ba-ba! A peace!